The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 25. Open our ears, Lord, and speak. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and made and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled the accounts with them. The one who received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been entrusted in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been entrusted with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent into the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. On my return, I would have received what is my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the five talents. For all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. From those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. For as this worse a slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever had something that was so precious, so amazing, that you never wanted to lose it or break it? If we get a new phone, a new car, if we give birth to a child or have something else that we consider precious and valuable, we take extra precautions to ensure that whatever we have, we take care of it so nothing terrible happens to it. I think this is the same kind of feeling that the third servant has after receiving this talent or this money or property from his master. He is afraid that what he has received from his master, he will lose it or, or, or not do what his master wants him to do. So he does the only thing he can think of. He buries it in the ground so nothing bad will happen. So how are you using the things that God has given you? How are you using the talents that God has blessed you with? I really think that is the question of the story that Jesus tells us today. God blesses us with gifts and talents, and we have a choice to use what God has given us to bless others or just keep them for ourselves. Often I think we are too afraid to use the gifts that God has blessed us with. And that fear, the the fear of of uh, others, the fear of not measuring up, the fear of even success holds us back from experiencing true joy. Joy from stepping outside of ourselves to take a risk to bless others. I think we all have had at least one instance in our life that has held us back, where fear has held us back. Maybe that fear was justified. Maybe you could say, yes, I was afraid and and I knew that if I did one thing to mess up, that there would be huge repercussions. 
Or maybe looking back, you had that one moment, that, that one shot, and you missed your opportunity. Over and over again, though, in the Bible, Jesus tells us, God tells us to fear not. God says directly to the prophet Isaiah, For I am the Lord your God, who takes a hold of your right hand, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid, for I myself will help you. When you take a look at your life, when you think about all the things happening at work or at home, what are you afraid of? What are you scared of? What is holding you back from living into the full life that God has given you? Is it a health concern? Is it a concern or a fear that's surrounding your job? Is it something happening at school? What is causing you to be afraid? I once talked with this woman who was a, a very faithful member of the church and, and she was somewhat new. She was coming to the church for a couple of years and uh, she had a little uh, baby girl and as the girl got older, she started to ask, well, I really want to enroll my daughter into Sunday school. And in fact, you know, I've worked with some kids and, uh, but I've never really taught Sunday school, but if you need help, I would be happy to help. And as any good pastor would say is, we always need Sunday school teachers, so come on and, and help, you know, we definitely will take your help. So she said she grew up in the church, but she stopped going after she graduated high school and only recently came back. And she said, but I, I have to be honest with you, pastor, I'm scared. I said, the kids are not that bad. Don't worry. You'll be fine. No, she said, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm scared because I really don't know a lot about the Bible. And what if they ask me a question that I'm not able to answer? I said, oh, don't worry about it. You know, why don't we do this? Why don't you, you know, help out for about six months and, and teach a few times here and there. And once you get used to it, if you really don't like it, you can stop. But if you do like it, you know, feel free to continue. She said, okay, that sounds good. So six months went by and she absolutely fell in love with teaching Sunday school. And she said, you know, I had this fear. I was afraid of stepping into that role. But you know what, Pastor? I truly love Sunday school. I, I truly love teaching and helping out. And when the kids hear a story for the first time and they really start to understand how much God loves them, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So maybe one of the things that you are afraid of is that you, of stepping into a new type of ministry here at the church. Maybe it's something you've never done before. Maybe it's something you feel you don't have a talent for. Maybe you're afraid of starting something new in your own life. What God says to us over and over again is do not fear. Do not be afraid for I am with you. We as a church have our own fears, right? As we look around our church and many other churches in, in the area and even around the country, there are so many churches that are struggling now. So many churches saying they have this great challenge ahead of them. Many churches are looking at their attendance and saying it's not what it used to be. Even some churches are closing. And we as a church can be afraid of doing the things that God is calling us to do. So we are held back. Maybe we have this great idea or we have this justice issue saying we as a church need to be standing up for this issue that we feel passionate about. But we can be afraid. What if some of our members don't like it? What if some of our members get upset about it? We are afraid. Sometimes though we have taken risks we, we have gotten out of the shallow water and threw ourselves into the deep end to do what we feel God is calling us to do. And I've seen how our congregation has been so faithful to what God is calling us to do. We've, 
We've raised money for Relay for Life and the Gardner CAC for Lutheran World Relief and uh, hunger issues. For our mission and ministry as a church. We have stepped out and we have tried new thing and things and we have succeeded in many things, but we also have failed in others. And I know whenever a need is put before our congregation, we really step up and we are generous. And what this shows me is we as a church have the ability to overcome our fears so that we can use the talents that God has blessed this congregation with to help others. And we are reminded over and over again <clears throat> of all the things that God has done for us and God continues to do for us. Because God has looked over uh, the world and we see this throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament. It says, God says, I know that my people are afraid. So I establish a new covenant with them. And then another covenant. And then God sent Jesus, his one and only son, into the world. So that we know how much God loves us. God didn't send a mighty king into the world to take over the world. Instead, God sent a baby born in a stable. And you know, when Jesus grew up and, and he began his ministry, one of the first things that happened to Jesus is he was sent out into the wilderness. And he was tempted by Satan. But Jesus did not give in to the fear and temptation. He did not seek glory for himself. And then again, he was proclaiming the word of God and he was rejected by so many that listened to him. He was reviled by the most powerful people around him. And he did not give in to the fear and temptation to walk away from the conflict and the controversy. And then when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane facing his death, he did not give in to the fear and temptation to abandon his disciples. And finally, when he was nailed to the cross, when he was mocked by those around him, he did not give in to the fear and temptation to yell back. Instead, he forgave those who put him there. Jesus remained faithful to his calling even in the most difficult situation, even when he was facing impending death. And what I learned from this story today is that there is a difference between burying your talents, your treasures out of fear and risking them for the sake of the gospel. The call that's given to us and that's call that's given to the church is to take the gifts that we have been blessed with, to take the risk and to put them out there knowing that God loves us, knowing that even if we mess up, God is still going to love us, knowing that we have a God who will be with us even when we experience pain and suffering and even death. So when you feel weak, when you feel unprepared, when you feel fearful for the future, the future of your life or the future of the church, remember that God is with us. When you are giving something so precious, so valuable, when you are entrusted with a responsibility, you can use the gifts that God has given you to bless the church and the world. Because through all the ups and the downs in life, God is with us, caring for us, each and every step of the way. Amen.